Hey guys, it's Keith with Bob CNC. I'm in the shop today working on a simple project. Going to make a welcome sign that we're going to set out on our front porch. I've got a piece of scrap from an old job that's about oh, 38 inches long, about seven and a quarter inches wide, and that's what I'm going to use. So let's take a look at how uh, we do this project. As with any new project, you start with Vetric, whether it's desktop or VCAR Pro or Aspire, you're going to confirm your job setup. Uh, it's going to be a single-sided job. My x-axis, that's going to be the length of the board, is 38 inches. My y-axis, which is the width of the board, 7.25 inches. And the thickness of the material is 3 quarter of an inch, that's 0.75. Uh, I will be working in inches, not millimeters. The Z, zero position, where the uh, bit is going to touch the surface of the material, is right there. The XY datum, uh, that's the work zero position. X zero and Y zero are going to be at the lower left corner of the workpiece. I'm not going to worry about modeling resolution since I'm not working with a 3D model. And as far as material setup, I have chosen to work with a solid color white. A little bit later when I do some tool pads, I'm going to add what's called some global fill to give you some contrast and a better idea of how this project is going to end up looking. I've got everything the way I want it. I click OK. Now, here's my piece as it's oriented on the uh, spoil board of my machine. And there's a problem. Now, if I was making this sign as is, horizontally, it'd be really easy to put that Wacom in there. But because this sign is going to be rotated 90 degrees to a vertical position, all that lettering has to be rotated too. So this gets kind of confusing. So there's a couple of things I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to create a one half inch frame all the way around the outside of the workpiece. Now to do this, oh, I went too quick. To do this, I'm going to go to the create uh, vectors uh, area. I'm going to draw a rectangle and there's a couple ways I can do this. If I remember to set my X and Y at zero zero, that's that lower left hand corner, then I can actually just enter in the width of the material or the length of the material 38 inches long seven and a half inches wide i can click create and when i close this out and just touch the edge of this rectangle i've got this magenta line around the outside indicating that i have a, 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 a rectangle setting there but i'm going to delete that and i'm going to go back to the uh, draw a rectangle tool to show you another way I can do the same thing and that is to simply do it the old-fashioned way and that would be to grab one of the corners of that rectangle in this case the uh, upper left hand side and drag my cursor all the way down to the lower right and release it and close it and once again I've got that highlighted magenta line around the outside of my uh, workpiece now what I want to do is I want to create my half inch frame and to do that I'm going down to the bottom of these tools here to offset and layout and I'm going to click the layout button or the offset button forgive me. I am going to offset a rectangle from the outside toward the inside by a half inch. I'm also going to delete the original rectangle because I'm not going to need two of them and I click offset oh 0.5 that's why it did that to me it caught me being dumb never be mad at Vetric always just admit you screwed up and move on so now I've got my new vector my old one is gone there's one more thing that I want to do is I want to offset this one about one inch the reason I want to do that is I'm going to use this as a frame of reference as I lay out text. But now I don't want to uh, lose my original rectangle. So I'm going to uncheck the delete, 
my offset is an inch, hit the button, there it is. This is where my text is going to be laid out. But now, my text has to be oriented uh, at 90 degrees to this particular shape. This is how I'm going to do it. I close out of that, and I go to my Draw Text tool, simply click on it, and you'll notice it created a text box right here in the piece. I'm going to go up here with uh, Georgia as the font that I've chosen. I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to put W, my first letter for welcome, and I'm going to grab this thing and drag it down into the workpiece. Now notice what happens as that little dotted line shows up right in the middle of the material that indicates that my letter is right in the center of that uh, rectangle, which is what I want for orientation. Now, in order to create the rest of my letters, all I have to do is go back to that draw text and just click next um, and type E for welcome. I'm going to drag that into this open. Once again, I'm centered. I'm going to make an L somewhere. L. Once again, whoops. I want to make sure that that is centered, which it is. I'm going to do that again. C. Same process. Centered. Click out here. O, O, make sure I'm centered, click out here, M, centered, and then E, come on, get over here, trying to get away, E, centered. Now, to rotate these, all I have to do is close out of the text tool, select the letter, and then come over to Transform Objects to the Rotate Selected Objects button. Just hit the button. And down here at Angle, just tell Vetric you want that thing to rotate 90 degrees and apply. And there it is. It's wonderful. And I've got a couple of letters out here that uh, apparently formed accidentally, and I'm just going to delete those and get them out. I like to eliminate my mistakes and make it look like I do everything right the first time. <laughs> right. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to kern these spaces. Of course, this is going to be vertically, and it's going to be a bit challenging because it's hard to do things ver vertically when you're looking at them horizontally, but it's the way it is. And so we're going to slide that L up. The C looks pretty good. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's... Take that O down a little bit. E. How do I look? My spacing... I might be able to come back here a little bit. Spacing, spacing. That could probably go up just a skosh. Spacing... Oh, that needs to go up just a little bit, and that's spacing here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab from up here, and I'm going to bring down a guideline, drop it right in the center of the work. There will be a little highlighted black mark on the right or the left, and this I'm just putting in here to help me make sure I've got everything centered correctly. I'm looking here. I'm looking here. Yeah, I, th I think I'm pretty good. All right. Well, that being the case, I'm just going to get that baby out of the way. I'm going to select this rectangle I created, and I'm going to delete that because I don't need it. And there's one last little thing that I need to add to this job. Now, where our house is, we have a lot of oak trees around us, and so Kathy thought it would be nice if we incorporated a drawing of an oak tree in this particular sign. 
Well, I happened to find one online that I really liked. Um, and so I'm going to import a bitmap. There's my oak tree silhouette. I'm going to double click on it and notice it dropped right in the middle of my design. I'm simply going to highlight it, move it out of the design. And there's nothing I can do with this tree in VCarve as far as a tool path because it's a JPEG and uh, VCarve is only going to work with uh, uh, vector, whether they're open vectors or closed vectors. And so what I have to do here is I have to convert this into vectors. And to do that, you come over to the trace bitmap and click on it. And you'll notice uh, that it faded, indicated it's been selected for bitmapping. And all my, uh, I've got everything set up the way I want it to be. I'm going to preview that. And you'll notice my tree has now been outlined and some open spaces in the tree have been outlined and the trunk's been outlined. And I can zoom in to see if I'm happy with that. And that looks fine. I'm going to apply it and I'm going to close that. Then I'm going to highlight the bitmap and delete it because I don't need it. Well, actually the, uh, the uh, JPEG. So now what I'm left with is a uh, a vector graphic of that tree. So I can double click on that to select it and I can bring this down into my drawing. But it's oriented the wrong way of course and so we simply go right back to transform objects and rotate selected objects and we're going to tell it 90 degrees please hit apply and boom there it is. Now, I want to center that in the workpiece. Oop, I have to close that first. Select, move that up a skosh. And then I'm going to grab this top handle and I'm going to pull up. And I'm going to pull down so my tree's a little bit taller, but no wider. And I think I'm happy with the way that looks. Now, I'm going to get ready here to do a tool path, and this is going to be really quick. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to select all the letters and the uh, tree graphic, and I'm going to highlight them. Control G groups them into one unit. And now I'm going to also highlight my picture frame, my half inch frame. I'm going to close out of my drawing tools and I'm going to come over here to the tool path and I'm going to create what's called a pocket tool path. And I'm using three different bits. I'm using a quarter inch end mill to remove the bulk of the wood, an eighth inch end mill uh, to do a, a closer cutting of what's left. And I'm going to do a fine cleanup, one sixteenth inch bullnose. And so everything is the way I want it. Calculate it. And now we're going to run a preview and let's see how it's going to look. Oh, before I do that, I want this global fill color to be kind of the color of my siding because I want it to match the house. And let's preview the tool pads, see what happens. Get some popcorn, enjoy the movie. This is only this is only going to take oh about a minute if that long. Oh, doodads. Any time now. Should have final credits here. There it is. I love it. I'm happy with it. I'm in the 3D view and I grab that sign and spin it around. And if I lift on one side, you can see that all my letters are proud, about a quarter inch from the carved surface, as is the tree. I love it. I think that's going to look really good. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. All right, guys. Well, I guess until uh, next time in our next project, this is Keith. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.